Hi, hello. My name is Dev Raj. I teach bioenergetics, and today we're going to do a bit of theory. And theory is the kind of word that when I, you know, when I was younger at school or whatever, you know, that's like, okay, time for my brain to go to sleep now. Boring old teachers with something on the blackboard or whatever. Books, diagrams, line segment AB, whatever. But this hopefully is not going to be so dull as that. And it is useful to know a bit of theory behind bioenergetics because, I mean, one good reason is, you know, at some point, if you're, if you're into this practice, you're going to be clearing some deep stuff and you're going to be in a very uncomfortable position and really feel like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. And it can help to think why, you know, why I'm, you know, bending backwards and expressing, you know, why, why am I doing this? So we're going to have a little bit of theory today. And I think the easiest way, the most basic thing about bioenergetics, probably a lot of you know it, is it's a body movement system to take holding out of the muscle system, out of the muscles. We've got muscles all around our body and they develop holding patterns. And another thing they can develop the bioenergetics treats is dead zones, a little more extreme, where in a holding pattern, essentially, you know, the muscles have gone into this weird kind of shape and they got stuck there. And a dead zone, it's like the awareness has dropped out of the muscle and they just become completely floppy and unresponsive. So the first question most people would ask is, well, why would I get holdings, holding patterns or dead zones? And that's what we're going to look at first. We are essentially social beings, you know, and uh, when we hit, start to hit our teenage years, uh, and uh, pretty soon what we know is like we have three basic needs, needs, social needs as social beings. And uh, essentially those are to, to, to find friends, you know, to find people that we can resonate with, that we can be in a little gang or group with, you know, that may be something that we, we pick up from our culture, trying to, as guys, be the alpha male or whatever, and uh, or, or as women, you know, trying to look perfect or something like this. There's different ways we can go about this. We may even go in the opposite direction to uh, the social norm and become like a punk or a goth or some kind of rocker or whatever the latest thing is. But as teenagers, we start to seek a friendship group and our own identity. And uh, the second social need is we want to be attractive to the opposite sex in some way or the same sex if we're orientated that way. And so that's a, that's a second social need. We want to look good or be able to attract sexual partners, lovers, a mate, whatever. And the third thing is usually a little bit later on in the teenage, in the teenage years, we want to get a role in society, you know, like a, a job or at least something where we feel we're contributing something. So these are normal, three normal healthy social needs that most people will have on some level or other. And the way that the brain essentially goes about getting these needs met, and this is governed and regulated by a special part of the brain, a part of the brain that's much more developed in humans than in, uh, say, for example, chimpanzees, our nearest primate relatives. And about one inch in from here is an organ called the prefrontal cortex, and its job, it's got executive control over our personality. It's like this boss character. And basically, it is trying to regulate our personality to create a kind of what psychologists call a persona, a front, a front that we put out into the world to try and show people who we are in the hope that we will get the friends we want, we will get the lovers we want, and we will get the role we want, you know? So this is a, the, this is a prefrontal cortex's job. And it takes this job pretty, pretty fucking seriously, really. And essentially, so we go about for many years trying to be a certain kind of person, trying to fit in in a certain way and get the lovers, get the friends, get the job we want, get the role in society. Uh, all good so far. There's nothing really intrinsically wrong with any of this. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with manufacturing a kind of persona and putting it out into the world. You know, I'm doing it right now, basically, you know. And there's nothing really wrong with it, but a problem starts to arise quite early on in that the way the prefrontal cortex, you know, it cannot, you know, it, 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 it cannot totally change us. All it can do is basically uh, allow certain aspects of our personality to come out and keep other aspects of our personality in. And that primarily applies on an emotional level. So that essentially what's going on is we are the prefrontal cortex decided which emotions, because we're being triggered by emotions all the fucking time, all over the place. It's, it's intrinsic to human life. And it's deciding, you know, you may remember being a teenager, how volatile it is, you know, how your emotions come and go. And what it's doing is it's deciding which of those emotions are okay to show in this persona, this front, this me, and which ones need to be kept hidden. 
And the issue becomes with the ones we're keeping hidden. Because essentially the way the prefrontal cortex to do it is what's, again, they call it body work or psychology, they call it repression. To repress the emotions and where they go is into the muscle system. Basically, it's simple as that. And so this is classic, this is conditioning essentially. This is conditioning caused by the prefrontal cortex. And what happens over time is parts of our body start to become quite tense or actually unresponsive, you know. The awareness has dropped right out of them. And this is caused by this, you know, this near obsessive fixation in many people in trying to be a certain kind of person to get these three primary needs met. All over media, marketing, you will see repeated. All of the stuff is based around this. This is what gets into you and convinces you, convinces you of a level of a prefrontal cortex. Yes, I really should buy this thing, you know, because uh, if any, I'm going to be a, I'm going to look better, or I'm going to get more girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. I'm going to impress my boss and soon I'll be taking him over, whatever, taking over the role. But what happens over time is all this repression, and it tends to store it, particularly in the back line of the body, because... You know, we want to look good on the front, so the, pre the prefrontal cortex, PFC, decides, okay, let's stick all the crap in the back, hey? We'll just stick it in, particularly round here in the lower back, favourite place of all. So stick it down there, no one will ever notice. They'll never notice all the crap we've got inside, all the repressed anger or sadness or whatever emotions we're holding back, the jealousy or whatever it is. We just stick it all in the stick it all in the lower back, stick it in the back line, put it around the belly, it's another area it likes to keep really under control. And the net result is after a few years, your body starts to stiffen, your personality becomes rigid, also held in place because other people see you a certain way and uh, relate to you a certain way, and you develop this rigid, static personality. And the next stage is you start to get quite ill, usually on some degree or other, because your energy can't really flow. There's all this rigidity all over the place, you know, and you don't feel OK just to go into emotions spontaneously. It's like especially certain emotions. Maybe, you know, when I started to do groups, I was 39. I hadn't cried for 10 years, maybe even 15 years, 20 years. I don't exactly remember. I hadn't cried, you know, so I didn't know what it was like to to feel sad, to feel wounded, to feel hurt by something. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't been there. And then it was like a layer of fear developed around it, you know. And I hadn't been really angry. I, would, I, would, I, could, I could like, um, you know, act a bit angry and a bit like, yeah, keep away from me, mate. All right. But like, you know, I, I couldn't, I wasn't going to really, rah, really let someone have it. Because underneath that is all the other feelings start to come out. I'd learn to control and suppress my emotions heavily. And how it's, the suppression takes place is into the muscle system. So when you start to work with body-based psychology, with body-based therapy, with uh, bioenergetics, which are pretty much one and the same thing, you're starting to open up the muscle system, open up the muscle system to get the holding out. And you need to take it to a degree quite slow and gentle. It's not a quick fix therapy. You know, you, you, you get into it and then you just keep going with it and maintaining. You can go to a workshop where it's an intensive and you clear a lot. But the chances are you need to maintain a bit and keep going. It's not a super quick fix therapy. You can get a huge shift in one session. But, you know, it's not like all of your stuff's just going to go. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a progressive thing, you know. But slowly what happens is you get the tension out. You get back into areas of your body, you know, you can feel your back. It's like, whoa, I have this whole spine of support inside of me. Okay, so that's really why we're doing bioenergetics. I don't think I can think of anything especially else important to do. The second thing I'm going to put in this um, theoretical episode is an important principle that I've learned personally working with people for a number of years. And that is, it's always good to work low down the body. Now, Someone might have very a lot of tension in the upper back, in their shoulders, their neck, very common. They might have a lot of mental and psychological issues that they're trying to uh, overcome. And, you know, in many types of therapy, where the issue is, that's where you go in. Got a bad, you got a bad shoulder, get the shoulder massage, get, get it, all those muscles loosened up, get some of the tension out, you know, makes sense. But in, you know, on a deeper level, all of these problems are caused by this prefrontal cortex and its obsessive attitude towards regulating our personality. And that's not to make it wrong, because that's you're going to compound the problem even more. But the reality is that your personality should be, your body and your personality should be run from lower down, from the gut mostly. This is your natural power center here inside your body, from your pelvis as well. These are areas of huge natural intelligence, enteric nervous system, all of this kind of thing. And 
Well, the reality is, is most of our childhoods have a certain level of trauma, and then all this conditioning comes in of how we should be, and basically we decamp, and we give all the jobs that most of our bodies should be doing, we give them to the mind. And it ain't the mind's job. You know, one classic example is sexuality. You know, it is not the mind's job to work out how you should be, to be sexual with people, to, you know, attract lovers, to get close. It's the job down here, the gut, pelvis, genitals. That's their job. When you are centered down here, you will exert, you will exude a natural kind of charisma, which will attract certain people. You will have a certain animal magnetism. You know, you just need to get the energy down here. Awful lot of, also personal power, you know. You know, when you want to be personally powerful, we try and do it from our mind. We just create a lot of rigidity. We become like a fucking robot, basically, you know. It's like, you know, we, we become like a control freak, you know. Just like, you know, if everyone would just do what I say, it would all be all right. You know, this kind of, uh, this kind of attitude, basically, you know. Like some 1970s boss, you know, that, uh, if you're that old, to work for, you know. There are probably still quite a lot of bosses like that around. But that's how we become. If you're trying to develop personal power, but you're not involving your body, you're not involving your solar plexus and your gut, you know, you're going to do it from your brain. So all of the problems that we manifest, that were like 98%, I would say, off the top of my head, are due to the mind being overly in control and trying to run too much stuff. So we work lower down the body. I work a lot lower down the body to get those lower body centers active and moving. It takes time. We work with the pelvis on the floor with pelvic exercises where your pelvis can start to get its act together and just take over for a bit. Your mind can sit back and your pelvis can free your whole sexual energy up, your whole back up, everything. We work in the gut level so you can really feel centered on this earth so your body has natural healing capacity so you can experience meditation. You've got a point underneath the mind with the gut. We work in the solar plexus up here. I'm not really showing these things very well, but I'm sure you know where your gut and your pelvis are. Solar plexus is about here, and this is your natural personal power center. You know, where you want to be powerful in the world and take a position and let people know that you're in authority. You not necessarily have to scream and shout and be in control. You just stand behind yourself in a certain way, and you have that as a natural resource. So when we get these lower centers active, you know, the mind starts to realize, fuck, I've been doing all this work and I don't have to do it. Your whole upper body starts to relax. You start to feel okay with who you are, pretty much regardless of your behavior. You can go over the top, but then you're open to other people's emotional reactions to you and something changes, you know. Maybe you've been an arrogant motherfucker for a while or something like that. And, you know, people are telling you this and it's like you get upset and you realize and you see it and something moves. You know, when we're held very tightly in the head, it's harder for anything to move. So that's why we work lower down the body. And that's an important principle in bioenergetics that, for me, you can't overemphasize enough. Okay, where are we at? About 13 minutes. I think that's enough, for, enough theory for one day. So hopefully this talk has been useful because bioenergetics is a fucking awesome practice. And, you know, at the end of the day, what it really does is it allows your natural personality to come out and it allows you also to really stretch out and do stuff in the world, if that's your calling. You know, you can get your mind behind what you do. You know, I see this all the time. People ramping themselves up. Yeah, guys, we're going to do it today. But, you know, and that's all great. But then your body often is not behind it. It wants to get the shit out. So understand this as well. This is a, in fact, I'll give it another two minutes on this because this is third very important principle to me is to understand two aspects of the mind. Higher mind from the prefrontal cortex and the limbic mind, much older. Higher mind wants to go for the positivity, get the good girl, get the good job, the great uh, husband, whatever it is, a great role, you know, it, what, the best friendships you can possibly imagine. And, the, the, and basically the limbic mind wants to get rid of all the crap that's held in the body. And the only way it knows to do that is to drag you back into the old conflicts where it came from. Simple as that. So, you know, your higher mind might be trying to move on and find a really much better boyfriend than the last four boyfriends you had, who were all like your dad, who was emotionally disconnected and never really gave you his heart. He never really shared what was going on in his life. He was hiding behind his newspaper or just not there. And then you find yourself as a woman repeatedly attracted to these, you know, disconnected men and trying to make them love you and it never works. That's because the limbic mind is trying to pull you back into the conflict and your higher mind is going, what the fuck? Why am I going out with this guy again? What the fuck? What the fuck? And 
you know, you're sharing with your girlfriend, how have I done it again? It's because the limbic mind is trying to get the repression out of the body. So when you see these repetitive patterns of behavior going on, you know, in a job, you know, you're going to go for the top role, but then suddenly the night before, before you're going to give the presentation, mind fucks come in, no, no, let Barry do it. He's actually the alpha male, not me really, you know, you know, and, and uh, you know, and you start to back off again. It's trying to pull you into all the old conflicts. The limbic brain is trying to release stuff from your body. And it's trying to drag you back into the shit to do it. So what you need to understand in that situation is, I need to take responsibility to get this stuff out of my muscle system. And then you're not going to be held back by this stuff anymore. You know, you're going to find the perfect guy for you, you know, or perfect woman for you. You know, someone you really feel like, wow, I've got a great connection with this person and they're, they're responsive to me. They're giving me what I need. You know, you're going to find the job you want, whether it's at the top of a tree or you're just really happy being the cleaner, whatever, you know, it's, uh, you know, you need to get the shit out of the body, the repression out of the body. And that is essentially the job of the limbic brain. And if, if you don't do it yourself from a higher level, taking responsibility, then you'll find yourself subconsciously dragged back into all the old conflicts over and over again. Okay, we're at 16 minutes now. Hopefully that's covered three good areas of theory that can be very, very useful for people. Okay, um, I'll be doing question and answer again soon. Uh, and that's uh, this Saturday at 6 p.m. I think that's the 17th of March. If you've got any questions about stuff, I find it really easy just to answer like that. I like to do things uh, verbally and face-to-face -face or, well, face to the phone, basically. Okay. Lots of love to everybody out there and remember, you can do it. You can do it.